Good morning. I have a super special curriculum to show you today. A curriculum that is, I mean, I love it. It's great. And I think I bought it for my boys to use. I bought several different versions of it, like several different years, five to seven, seven to nine. Oh, and six to eight I bought. So I'm going to show you through the six to eight today in a different video I attach at the end. I'll show you the five to seven. If you just tuned in and you're debating between the five to seven and the six to eight, go for the six to eight. You won't regret it because it's not as complicated as, uh, as, as you think. And it's, I mean, it's the perfect level for five to sevens even. So, okay. So now it's supposed to be a gifted curriculum, but anyone can use it. It's just very dynamic. I think it's great for neurodiverse kids and ADHD kids, and I guess gifted children, but really I think that, I mean, it just depends on your child and what curriculum they wanna use, but I'm gonna show you through it. First, let's start with our games. We have an observation game. This game was originally made in Spain. It is Postman, and you have these houses that you set up. It's a map, and you set the map different every time. And then there's cards that tell you, hey, drop a letter off at, you know, a, a brown house with a green door, depending on how complicated you want to make it, because there's three different levels. So it could be, you know, a house that has these four shaped windows on it. So it just depends. So the whole family can play and then whoever sees the house first gets to drop their letter off. Next up, we have a book I want to show you this. It was a little wet in the flood, unfortunately, but... Um, it is Kate DeMar. So if you're starting them and you want to start them on chapter books, this is a beautiful, interesting one to start them on. Um, I do them as real, again, a flood, and so it's still drying. <laughs> oh. But anyway, it's by Kate DeCamillo, and it's Mercy Watson. She's a pig. Mercy is a pig. There's even a picture book about how the how Mercy came to live with the Watsons. Um, but anyway, so it's just, it's a very interesting book. And this one is, they have a whole bunch of them. And this one is the Goes for a Ride. Okay, I like chapter books that have, let's see, what game can I show you next? I like chapter books that have pictures in them. Now, before we get to curriculum, so this is, how do I open it? Oh, yeah. So, this is a book that has a bunch of different puzzles. So it's a solo game, but of course, you know, I like solo games because I do it with your child. So basically it's like, hey, you want to get the dog to the dog house. Yeah, and then you have these pieces. So how do you get the dog to the dog house and that dog to that dog house? And see, they're on here. And then you have to use the roads, pieces of the roads. And there's a few different rules for how to use them and stuff and such and like that. So this is called, I believe it's called Cat and Mouse. I think this game is called, it would help it if it had a name somewhere on here, but I feel like we're, it's not going to. And lastly, I'm gonna show you a game that's pretty sweet. I think it's awesome, because you can play it up to five players. So, and it's very easy and it's very fast paced. So everyone gets a color of dice, okay? So this is blue. So you each get 10 die and you hold them in your hand and then you roll them. Whoops, that's green. And then you decide, whoops, and then you decide what number you're gonna go. Hey, I got, you know what? I got two twos, so I'm gonna go for two twos. And then you continually roll, and every time you get a two, you add it in. Every time you get a two, pretend that's a two. I'm gonna add in whoever gets, you know, their pile finished first wins. So it's a non-stop rolling game, and you each choose a color, and whatever color you are, you just keep rolling until all your dice are the same number that you have chosen. It's called Tenzi. I want to say it's a Japanese game, but I'm not really sure. But there's like a million different versions of Tenzi you can play. T-E-N-Z-I. All right. Thank you for tuning in today. So I'm about to show you a sweet curriculum. Um, of course, I have a ton of laundry. And so what was I? And so I was like, you know, I could do the laundry or I could use it as a chair. So I'm leaning against my clean laundry that I need to fold and may get to today, but really I can't promise, can't promise. Now, every year I set a goal for my homeschool and this year was to play more games with my kids because relationships are really important. I love board games and, you know, winning and losing and just that type of thinking that's involved in different games, I think is super important. So every week I choose, okay, I'm gonna choose three games to put on the shelf and then they can choose one or I can choose one to do during the week with them. But now, just in case you're wondering why I have so many board games. Okay, so today let's talk about, this is moving beyond the page. So every year that I've seen so far has four concepts. They're called concepts. This is concept one, this is age six to eight. This is called concept one. You do not have to do age five to seven to do any of these concepts. Like you can start cold from wherever. And I'm gonna show you in them and give you a tour, if you will, and show you a couple exercises from each. So they each come with a parent manual and then they come with a student manual. So in the parent manual, when you open it up, 
give you a quick tour of it. So these are the table of contents in this. Communities around the world, citizenship, plants and animals. So this curriculum will cover your history, your geography, science, uh, math, it does math in here and it does some language arts. Now it presumes that your child knows how to read by the time you begin this. So if they don't, A, it's not a big deal because I use it and my child doesn't know how to, I mean, they know how to read. My one is learning how to read, the other knows how to read, um, but not independently, shall we say yet. Or a little bit independently, but not enough to just sit down and like do it. So they say, okay, this is the typical daily schedule, implementing the lesson plan 60 to 90 minutes. I don't, I totally disagree. I honestly think it takes five to 10 minutes to do this. So these are the required books for this is If You Give a Pig a Pancake, The Little House by Virginia Lee Burton. And so these are all good choices. This would be considered a secular curriculum. So there is no, now The Giving Tree, I don't consider that a good choice because some of these books, they're a little more, there's just better options. Like the Us Born Children's Picture Atlas, there's just better options if you ask me, but that, I mean, I just read a lot of books. And so I ignore this daily schedule. I don't think it's accurate because you can implement a lesson in five minutes. So that's one of the reasons I think it's great for ADHD kids. Plus it's so dynamic. So these are all the materials. If you order the materials box, which you can for an extra rate, I ordered it for the five to seven. I didn't order for any of these. It's fantastic the way it's ordered. It is so organized and ordered, you're never digging through it. It's not like sunlight boxes when you open them up and it's a pile of stuff. So there's the materialist. Now I implement it very loosely though, so I'm not pulling out all these materials all the time. These are the definitions because it does do language arts, so it does work on spelling and, and definitions and things that you're gonna be working on in this book. So for example, I'll show you in the first lesson because we're gonna be doing rural, which is in the country, and urban, which is in the city. So I'll show you a couple lessons in here in the first one. I just wanna make sure there's nothing else to show you in this. No, I don't think. Well, I'll show you what a typical lesson plan. So this is the unit review what you're gonna do, like think, definitions that you're gonna use throughout and different things like that that are gonna be covered in this book. But this is, so exploring a community two days. And again, it's up to you. I personally just do how I, I'll show you the lessons and you decide for yourself how to do them. So these are the questions. How do communities serve and protect people who live in them? How do members of the community help meet others' needs? And these are the definitions you're gonna be working on, rural and urban. And these are different skills if you want, like social studies, social science, things like that that you're gonna be working on. And then it has activity one, places in the community, explains how to do places in the community. Let's take a look at a lesson. So these are some of the lessons we are going through today. You go through them pretty quick. I find you go through them, like I'm using them with my seven-year-old, but with any kid, you go through them so fast. I use them in addition, in addition to the other curriculums. It's never my sole curriculum, that's just personal preference. Um, because I have a, a really good math curriculum I like, I have a really good reading curriculum I like. So this is an addition. So this would be places in the community. So for example, there's always option one and option two. So this is the word box. So these are here, like we did it orally. I do a lot of stuff orally with kids that can't sit still and with kids who can't handwrite yet. And so, which is also why the lessons don't take as long. So what, what do these look like and why are they important in a community? What are these and why are they important in a community? And then this is option two, which doesn't have that box up there and they just decide what are the, what would these things be in a community and write it down. So then you read City Mouse and Country Mouse, of course, very cute story. I've heard it told a bunch of different ways, still cute. And then rural or urban. Now this is where we digress. So would you rather live in the city or country? Write three sentences. It doesn't say about what, but you can figure it out. And then draw yourself a picture, draw yourself a picture of, uh, of yourself in the country or city. So again, we just talked about, hey, rural or urban, getting those definitions used, and what did you like better? What are the benefits to living in the rural? What is the benefits to living in the, the country? So that's how I did it. <laughs> so it's up to you how you do it. But then we talked about the map, and we looked at the map, and hey, this is the map key, also known as the legend, because we've done some of this stuff through other curriculums. It's just um, because we study geography a lot and the books we read. Now these we didn't use, and I didn't take them out. The reason I didn't take them out is because I just don't think that paper would make a super great prism. <laughs> so I didn't want to cut up the book just um, for the prism. I just don't think it would make, because it's paper, it's pretty thing. And, and it's just not something that we need, I feel we need to do. But that's how I use this curriculum, is it gives me a lot of great ideas. I'm, I'm gonna show you. So if you like that, the paper's pretty thin, but you can go through and cut up all these cubes, cut up all this stuff. 
Here's community workers. So directions, write the name of each community worker here. And then what you can do is you can also do, this is an activity one, option two, but they also have this one where you can fold this under, cut it out and fold this under and paste it on the map. So that's kind of cool. But I wanted to show you what we did do today, which was, which I really like. So they talk about in here too, goods and services. A good is something that you eat or you use somehow. And then a service is something um, that is done for you. Something like that, those are the definitions. So we went through, is this a good or a service? Briefly talked about it, where can it be found? things like that so again it's something we do orally this is very interesting this is math in the market so do you see how it's all dynamic all different and it incorporates a lot of different skills so your mom sent you to the store to buy a gallon of milk and a donut for each person in the family how many goods we need to buy so how many um, donuts how many milk and then you can you know add them together kind of thing so i just like that it incorporates a lot of different elements into it so let's go into concept number two this is matter and movement so let me just show you again. These are the things that will be covered in here. So it also has everything under here, always has the required books and materials that you're gonna be using. You can buy them from there, or a lot of times you can get most of them from the library. I wouldn't say it's a guarantee you can get all of them, but the majority of them you can. And I really don't think you're missing much if you don't get it. It is nice, but there are, you can always find a substitute for it, in my, in my opinion at least in the five to seven one I did and what I've done so far in here you can. So balance and motion, earth and states of matter. So our planet, rocks, water, everywhere. Okay, so it's done pretty much the same way, the same teacher's manual, how to use it. You're gonna give spelling and have them do spelling on these things as well. These are the definitions of the vocab you're gonna be working through here. False, a statement that can be cannot be proven true and can be proven, or a statement that can be proven wrong. So things like that, okay? So now I have a different math, for, uh, science curriculum that I have showed you that deals with all this types of stuff, but it's still interesting to do. But let's look through this book here. I have some cordoned off to show you because I wanna show you how they incorporate it. It's like I said, I find it very dynamic. This is dividing solids. So record the number of pieces the solid has been divided into and the fractional amount of each piece. On the bo bottom, divide the solids according to the fraction. So four pieces. So anyway, so this would be four. And then I guess one out of four. If you divided it, then yeah. So each piece would be one out of three, right? Because there's three pieces. So this would be one out of three. No, it takes me a second to figure it out. It takes me a second to figure it out. Um, because this is not always my strong suit. So look at this. Choose three solids, list them on this sheet, and write a word or two that describes each using your senses. Now this in the liquids, there's another one up here that has to do with the liquids, and it is choose three liquids. Same concept, you know, write a word or two using that describes them using it. Do not taste liquids that might be dangerous. <laughs> so that's handy. And then it's got measuring liquids which it does a bit of this in five to seven, but I'm telling you, you can skip five to seven. The only thing the five to seven has is if you wanna go, it goes a lot into habitats, but if you just, um, there's a couple of books you can read on habitats. I, I really don't think that you necessarily need, um, need the five to seven curriculum. Like if you're torn between the two, so true or false. Um, so this is after the Oobleck. The Ooh Black book, again, you can get it from the library. It's, um, some kids will like the story, some kids will not like the story, but it's interesting nonetheless. Definitely interesting. All the stories on here that they've chosen are interesting, but they're a little long. <laughs> In my opinion, they're a little long, but they're still good. So true or false, teaching you again, how to use that true or false. Okay, what is next? Concept three, culture. Let's go into culture. So what are we gonna be studying this year for culture? That's the required books. And see, this is interesting because it's the Egyptian Cinderella, the Irish Cinder Lad, and there was another one. There was another um, Cinderella version too, I thought that came with the Africa is not a country, Christmas around the world. So again, they're very, some of the books are long, um, but again, that's just my personal opinion. So geography, use maps and globes, cardinal directions, the seven continents, around the world, uh, stories around the world, plot, fiction, things like that. So let's go into, all right, so take a look at culture. So where in the world am I? Two versions of this, one where 
I live in a home on, and then it, that's where you put your street. My house is in the town of blah, 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 blah. You can go all the way through that, okay? The second version is that it just doesn't have, like you can draw the pictures here, I would assume, because it doesn't have them available. So next to map symbol and keys, what does that, what does that stand for? What does that stand for? What does that stand for? Things like that. Another activity is, so you take this and then what you're going to do is I believe you are going to, oh, here it is, parts of the map. So circle the title in red, underline the capital city in orange. That represents capital city, of course. Circle the buildings in pink. And uh, yeah, so certain inches uh, equals how many miles, things like that. So from Austin, San Antonio, so you're doing some measuring. It's got the compass, north, east, south, treasure map. So again, see how it's interesting, but see how they don't take long. In my opinion, you can add this on and it, it reminds you of skills. It reminds me of skills that I may, um, I may not directly teach otherwise. So for example, in one of them, it has um, the apostrophe and showing the possessive. I forget in which book, uh, but so in here, whoops, let's go. This is relationships. This is the number four book. The concept four, living things in their environment again. So remember I told you we actually covered that in five to seven. So I guess they're covering it again here. Required books and materials, da, 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 sun, moon, stars. So these are different things that I'm sure they're covering the first time. In the first, in the first, the five to seven, they just stuck mostly to deers and animals and what ate what and stuff like that. This is the, oh, that's unit two, the miraculous journey of Edward Tulane. So it deals with like emotions, irregular verbs, apostrophes, like I said. So let me show you the apostrophe unit 61 because it was kind of cool. Oh, this is dun, 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 apostrophe. So up here it would say nine apostrophe and then it's not always as easy unless I put it off. Yes, I did, okay. So nine apostrophes, Nell's Diner, or is it Neil's Diner? I guess Neil's Diner. Neil's Diner is an example of that. And then apostrophe, putting apostrophes in. So this gets a little more complicated as you go through it. So it does progress with it. Reflexive pronouns, I, you, you, he, she, it. We, and then reflexive of that. And then let's see, I'll give you a little tour. Let's go through a couple pages of this, living things in their environment. The inheritance vocabulary, directions, match the vocab works to their definitions. Okay, so a feature that an animal has that is passed on from parent to his or her child. Is it genetics? Is it trait? Is it hereditary? That seems to be a little complicated for my seven-year-old. Maybe, maybe it's not. Maybe it's not um, once we do it, but at least we're practicing it. Parents and offspring. See, so then it goes something a little easier. The parents and their offspring. Shared traits. So I like that it works charts in here. It does that too in five to seven. Always has a chart or two in there that you can make. Inherited traits or learned behaviors. Very interesting. Now see, the reason I don't think that you need to teach this at this age anyway, is just because when they get older, it's just a conversation you can have. They'll remember it a lot easier, but no reason why you can't learn it now. One of these things is not like the other. Ooh, interesting. Circle the brother or sister that is different. So very simple, right? Because like you can't tell from here, maybe he has freckles, but you'll be surprised when you ask kids to do this, they come up with things that you didn't think of. Uh, but it gets you thinking, gets you talking, and do you see what I mean? That you can, honestly, I just pull it out. I've always just pulled it out at breakfast time, and while we're sitting there, I'm like, I just discuss whatever it is I read in the book to do. Okay, and that's interesting. That last thing I showed you was about um, different species and genetics and different generations and stuff. Okay, there you go. I gave you a tour, gave you a look. How do you like it? What do you think? Let me know. I'm very curious what you think about it. If you agree with my assessment, you don't agree with my assessment. If or there's anything I got wrong, definite possibility of that. Please let me know and have a great day. Can you say please like and subscribe? Please like you like. And hit the bell for notifications. The bell you know that they didn't. <laughs> <laughs>